In this video, we're going to take a look at two legal problems. The first one we're going to take a look at is medium rooms number one, and the second one we're going to take a look at is medium rooms number two. So the first problem we're going to take a look at is medium rooms number one. We're given an array of medium uh, time intervals where um, intervals to i is equal to a start at i and end i. So we're going to have a start time and the end time and uh, determine if a person can attend all meetings. So you can see here we're given a list of intervals, right, integer uh, 2D array, and we're given a integer uh, array of intervals. Uh, we want to see if we this person can be able to attend all meetings. So like I said again, this is the start time and this is the end time. So in this case, the start time is 0, the end time is 30. And you can see the next interval, the start time is 5, and the end time is 10. So you can see that th there is an overlapping. And when I say overlapping, that means that there are two intervals that are overlapping or happens at the same, uh, there could be a situation where the two intervals happen at the same time, right? So that means that there's overlap, so this person cannot be able to attend all meetings. So for example, you can see that there's overlap here, right? So you can see there's overlap here, and there's also overlap here, 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 right? There's no overlap here, and there's no overlap here. So what we can say is this, if there's overlap, there is, uh, this person cannot be able to attend those two meetings, right? Or well, I should say this person cannot be able to attend all meetings if there's overlap. So in this case, we're just gonna return false, okay? And here you can see we have an example here which returns true because between the start time is two and the end time is four. And the start time is seven and this interval start end time is 10. So the start time is seven, which has happened after right, after, after four, so there's no overlapping with those two intervals, then we're just gonna return true, okay? So to solve this problem, like I mentioned before, we're gonna make sure there's overlapping. And what we're gonna do is we're actually going to sort, first sort the array in by the start time in ascending order, so we're gonna have something like this, where two to four comparing with 7 to 10 instead of 7 to 10 comparing, comparing with 2 to 4. Then what we're going to do is we're going to compare with the last element, the end time of the current interval, right? Oh, sorry, of the previous interval with the start time of the current interval, right? So if the previous interval's end time is, in this case, is less than the, uh, the, the, less than the start time, right? Less than the start time of the current interval, then this is a good, This is there's no overlapping. If we have a situation where we have zero to 30, right, then we know that there there's overlapping because this is actually bigger than, right, bigger than or equal to the um, the start time of, uh, of, the, of the current interval, right? So we wanna make sure we're, uh, we're basically returning false if we found that there is a, uh, if the current interval's start time is less than the previous interval's end time, okay? So now let's take a look at how we can do this in code. So to do this in code, uh, first what we're gonna do is we're gonna define our base case because there could be a situation where the interval's dot length is equal to zero, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna filter that, uh, filter that out. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna sort the array. So we're gonna sort the array by start time in ascending order. Then what we can do is we can compare with the previous interval with the current interval, right? We want to make sure that there is no overlapping. And that's what we're going to do is we want to make sure uh, return false if there is overlapping, okay? At the end, we want to make sure we return true if, um, if we found that there's no overlapping, right? So in this case, we're going to have our n, which is equal to intervals, how many intervals we have. We're gonna to check to see if, in this case, n is equal to zero. If it is, we're gonna return true because in this case, we have no, in, there, there's no medium. Then we can we can pretty much say that there's no overlapping. We can just return true. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna say sort the array. Okay, we're gonna say intervals. And then we're gonna compare, right, if by the start time in ascending order. Okay, once we sort the array by start time, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to basically start um, from index zero, 
And then what we're going to do is we're going to end at n minus 1. And what we're going to do is this. We can compare. We can basically use the current interval comparing with the adjacent interval to see if there's an overlapping, right? So we can say that the, the current index is the previous interval. And then i plus 1 is the current interval. We want to see if there's overlapping between those two intervals, right? So what we can do is this. We can say interval, um, yeah, interval or, um, or I should say median one, right? Let's say median one is equal to intervals at i, right? And uh, integer medians, median two is equal to intervals at i plus one. Okay, so we have two medium, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna compare if medium one at um, the end time is less than, right, if it's less than medium two at the start time, then what we can do is continue. Otherwise, if we have a situation where the end time is bigger than or equal to the start time, then we wanna make sure we are returning false, right? Uh, and, and at the end, what we're going to do is we're going to continue to do that, um, iterating all the intervals that we have in our uh, in our intervals, right? In our intervals array. And at the end, what we're going to do is we're going to return true if we satisfy all the conditions. If we iterate the entire uh, array and we know that there is no interval uh, overlapping. So now let's try to run our code. Okay, now let's try to submit. Uh, that's because in this case, if we have is bigger than right, if it's bigger than uh, if the end time of the first interval is bigger than the medium room's start time, then we can be able to return false. If you can notice that if the start time and the end time is equal to the same, then we can we we don't have to return false. Okay, so now let's try to run our code. And here you can see we have our success. We're going to take a look at a legal problem called medium rooms number two. So we're given an array of medium room uh, minimum time interval, uh, where in, where interval i is equal to start at start at i and end at i. So we have a start time and we also have an end time, and we want to return the minimum number of conference room required. So here you can see we have intervals array of intervals, right? We have a start time, we also have an end time, and in this case we need to have a minimum number of conference room. So in this case we are going to have two because you you can see that these. This interval right here is overlapping with this interval, so we need one conference room for this and one conference room for this. But you can see that this interval happens right after this interval, so we can safely say, say that this interval just only need one room. And then here you can see we have another example where we have two intervals here. So if we have two intervals and you can see that they're not overlapping each other, so we can just keep them in one room. So so far we know that we can say that. If they're not overlapping with each other, then we don't need a, another room, right? Now let's take a look at more example, right? In this case, we have one interval, uh, one room that we need so far, right? So then we have another interval which we starts at two and the end uh, ends at seven. So you can see the top, the first start time is actually less than the top element on our heap. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna add the end time of this interval onto our heap. So you can see that so far we have two interval, which one interval ends as three and the other interval ends as seven. Okay, so then we're going to add another interval. You can see we have a interval starts at two and ends at four. So you can see the start time is also less than the start, uh, the top element on our stack, uh, on our uh, on our heap. So what we're going to do is we're going to record the end time, which is four, right? We're going to create a new room for that. Um, in this case, we going to create a new room because there's no end time that is bigger than, uh, you know, bigger than or equal to the start time of this, right? In this case, the, the what I'm trying to say is that the start time is not bigger than any of those uh, any of those end time that we have. So in this case, we have one interval. In this case, we're just going to have one room, right? So if we were to move on, you can see we have another interval, which is starts at two and ends at seven. So you can see that this start time is actually less than the start, uh, the top element of our on our heap. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new room for this. So now we have two rooms, right? So we're going to add the end time onto our heap. So we have seven, 
So it makes sense we have two, um, in this case, two medium rooms. Uh, yeah, in this case, we have one ends at three and the other one ends at seven. So we keep track of that. In this case, in this case, we ha let's say we have another interval um, that happens like right here. We know that the, um, the minimum, right? The minimum uh, end time that we had is three. So in this case, if it starts at four or five or six, we can be able to append it here, right? Or even seven, we can be able to append it here, right? So what we can do is let's say we have another element like this, which is actually also happens at two. Then in this case, what we're gonna do is we're gonna confirm to see if there's a interval. Uh, in this case, the top, the minimum end time is actually uh, less than the start time of this. In this case, there's no, right? Three is bigger than the start time of, of this interval. Then in this case, what we're gonna do is we're gonna just add this end time onto our heap. And you can see that makes sense because we have three rooms where right? we need three rooms to to uh, to perform those uh, medium rooms uh, to perform those mediums, I should say. So first, we're going to sort the array, and uh, we're going to sort the array by start time. So once we sort the intervals by start time, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, create a min heap, a min heap to keep track. Of the end time, right? So we want to make sure we keep track of the end time. If the current interval, if the current interval's end time, uh, start time is actually bigger than, uh, it, sorry, is actually less than the top element on our on our um, heap, then we were going to create a new room, right? So in this case, if we were to create a new room, we want to make sure we add that end time, that current interval's end time onto our heap. And then what we're going to do is we want to find the minimum. So we want to iterate all the intervals we have in our intervals, and we want to find the minimum uh, medium, uh, or I should say, minimum rooms. And at the end, we want to return the min rooms. So in this case, we're going to first sort the array. Okay, we're going to sort the array by the, the start time. So once we sort the array by the start time, we're going to have a priority queue. Which is going to be integer. And uh, we're just going to call it min heap. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to find the uh, minimum rooms by iterating, right? So first what we're going to do is we're going to first add the current interval, the first interval onto our min heap, and we're going to start from the second interval so that we can compare the current interval with the top element on our min heap. So we're going to say min heap dot add intervals at zero. So we're adding the first interval onto the, the heap. And then we're going to start at the second in, uh, interval that we have. And uh, it's going to be intervals.length. And what we're going to do is we're going to compare to see if intervals at i, right, uh, at 0, right? So in this case, the current interval, I should say current, it, current interval is equal to intervals at i. And what we're going to do is if current start time, right, if the current start time is actually bigger than, if it's bigger than the top element of our min heap, right, so it's going to be min heap dot peak, which give us the top element of our min heap. If it's bigger than or equal to, right, if it's bigger than or equal to, if it's equal to, we can still have use the same room, right, so if it's equal to, uh, then what we're going to do is we're just going to um, basically continue, right? We're going to continue because we can use the same room. Otherwise, what we're going to do is we're going to make sure we add the current interval end time onto the minimum heap, right? So in this case, we're going to have our minimum heap dot add current at end time, which is going to be current at one. And the thing is that we're also going to add a um, 
So what we're going to do is we're going to basically t take a look at the top element that we have on our min heap. And then we're going to compare that with the start time of our current interval. And let's say if we have a situation where our current interval start time is uh, less, uh, bigger than or equal to the top element on our min heap, then we can use the same room. And to use the same room, what we're going to do is we're going to remove the top element off of our heap and then we're going to add the current intervals end time. We're basically just going to up, update the 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 min um, the new end time because we're using the same room. Now the new end time for this room for this current room is going to be the current intervals at end time. So we're going to say min heap dot pool. Now this will basically take out the last element, right? And we also have to consider there could also be a situation where the min heap dot peak is bigger than the current start time. Then what we're going to do is we're going to add the current and uh, current uh, intervals end time added onto our heap as well. So what we can do is we can do this. We can do interval uh, min heap dot add current at one, right? Which is the end time. So it doesn't matter if we uh, we are adding onto our uh, current existing room or creating a new room, we have to add the current inter uh, intervals end time onto our heap. Uh, in this case, if we this condition satisfied, we're just going to pull the top element, right, the top uh, element on our heap off of our um, off of our uh, off our heap, off our min heap, right. So at the end, we're going to return the minimum rooms we need. So it's going to be the size of the heap, the size, which is basically how many rooms that we have in our heap, right? So how many end times that we have, which is basically uh, equals to how many rooms we have. So let's try to run our code. Uh, in this case, we cannot convert this into integer. Yeah, so because in this case, we're adding the end time, so we're going to change it to one. Uh, and now let's try to submit the code. And here you can see we have our success. So this is how we solve the media rooms number two problem.